Health inspectors of Reddit, what's the worst violation you've ever seen? When I went to culinary school one of professors made the statement if you want to know how clean a restaurant's kitchen is go to bathroom first before you are seated. If the bathroom is dirty there is a good chance the kitchen is in the same condition. Finally something I can comment on. My uncle is a health inspector in rural Australia. He got several complaints about a fish and chips shop in a small town in Victoria. With reports of it being a bit grotty and people getting chunks of hair in their hot chips. So he rocks up one day unannounced on a blazing hot day in the middle of summer. And the owner grates him and shows him around wearing a white singlet top with sweat patches under the arms. Short shorts and no shoes. This guy's body was covered in hair. Not just on his arms and chest. But his back and neck were like a werewolf. Really. This must be the source of the hair in the chips. My uncle decides to make a tactful comment about having wear appropriate clothes when working. So as to protect against hot oil burns. After seeing the property and giving a few basic suggestions. The only other thing he notices that needs immediate attention is the deep fryer itself. The oil is old and filthy. And likely full of this guy's hair. So he orders the bloke to drain it out right then and there. The owner does so. And at the bottom of the oil vat is a dead. Deep fried and crispy dart cat. Totally unfazed. The owner simply said oh. That's where my cat went. Turns out a few months previously the shop was having a rodent problem. So the owner bought in a cat to catch them. He thought the cat escaped overnight and ran away. Nope. Looks like little Fluffy drowned in the deep frying oil. And Mr. Chippy has been frying him up over and over and over again ever since. The clumps of hair locals were complaining about weren't from the half man half wolf owner. But the fur and flesh of a dead cat. My stepdad used to be a baker in an authentic recreation of an 18th century new French fortress. Because they sell bread to the public. The health inspector came by. And she was ripping into my stepdad for violations like the stonework walls. The doorless entrance ways. Or the lack of a mosquito zapper. He pointed out that they were following the highest standards except for things that would destroy the authenticity of this 18th century bakery. The health inspector relented and agreed to give him a pass after verifying the food storage area was secure. They went to the shed, which was a doorless building attached to the bakery. As the health inspector went in, there happened to be an escaped cow licking all of the loaves. My stepdad could only say, honestly, this never happens. They passed the health inspection. TL. DR. Health inspector witnesses escaped farm animal licking all the bread in a bakery. Passes health inspection anyway. My stepmother is the lead health inspector for a decent sized suburban town. While I have never asked what the worst thing she has witnessed as part of her job was, I do know of one instance that was pretty gross. A truck full of lobsters was traveling down the highway and crashed. The police came. And eventually they towed the truck. As a board of health inspector my stepmother was consulted to see if any of the lobsters were viable and she told them no. The load is a total loss since there were literally lobsters scattered across the highway covered in dirt, sand, etc. Fast forward 24 hours and one of the restaurants in town ran a special. Twin lobsters for $19.99. Apparently the owner of the trucking towing company knew the restaurant owner pretty well so they made a deal whereby the restaurant would pay a very discounted price for the road lobsters. The restaurant would turn around and illegally serve the lobsters to unsuspecting customers or sell them out of a truck behind behind the restaurant. I'm not sure what the repercussions were but I think they were shut down for like a week. They closed shortly thereafter and now there's a new restaurant there. The towing company lost their contract to tow vehicles semi-trucks with the town and state. Edit. Source. My favorite Chinese restaurant got shut down. My ex-wife worked for the city and I asked her what was the deal. She said the health inspectors found some being leaking from the selling. They lifted the ceiling tile and shined a flashlight and saw multiple eyes staring back at them. It was chickens. They were raising chickens and the selling and chicken it was dripping in the food that I had been eating at least once a week. Not a health inspector, but worked in a restaurant where the managers were good friends with one. The coffee ice cream shop next door was shut down out of nowhere and we were all shocked because they were pretty busy. Health inspector came in one day and manager asked why it was shut down. 
Health inspector proceeded to tell my manager that he walked in and announced early one morning before the shop opened, only to find the owner jerking off behind the counter by the ice cream. My friend was inspecting a restaurant, walked out the back to find a man stirring a huge pot of curry, with his arm, no spoon or anything, just up to his hairy elbows in curry. Obligatory link to this comment, which made me think at least twice about every restaurant I've ever been to. Not a health inspector, but a Chinese buffet near me was closed down because it got a 0 stroke 5 in its inspection. I got food poisoning from there once, the staff just got up and left, locked the door, never went back, all the food was still out and everything. A week later a man was walking his dog past said Chinese buffet and heard a loud buzzing noise, looked through the window to see hundreds of thousands of flies that had taken over the building as their new home was so bad that Pizza Hut next door had to close to edit to anyone asking this was in Gloucester, England. Not a health inspector, but someone in my city repainted their floor with non-slip paint and literally painted over a dead rat, sealing it in there, and to top it off, it was in the middle of the kitchen, not under a bench or anything similar. My dad was one, is now retired, of everything I ever heard, to jump out, he noted the trays at a Chinese restaurant weren't clean or warm. When he asked the employees, they acknowledged the heating element had failed, but that there was still chemical backup. Somehow, though, it wasn't hitting the dishes. Then he saw a cockroach crawl out of the washer, attempting to understand how the dishes were not getting rinsed. He found that it was backed up with cockroaches. They were cleaning the trays. They closed for remodeling for three days. But it was really cleaning up in order to pass inspection before they were allowed to open again. At a similar restaurant, he asked about a pail on the floor filled with a green substance. Soup of the day, they told him. Dad asked what it was, and was told it was scraps. The bucket was never emptied. It turned out, the scraps going in roughly equaled the soup going out. Which meant that there was stuff in there that had been there for weeks at room temp. On the floor, dad had them dump it as he looked on. A bonus story was when he caught a guy smoking in a kitchen and exposed the cigarette behind his back with a handshake. The dumpster needed to be moved 6 inches from the back exit of the bar, otherwise everything I inspected was up to standard. Bartender seemed sweaty all the time. Bathroom stalls could have used a little touch up. Didn't get to spend much time in the basement. I became quite dizzy. For some reason. They were given a passing grade. Worked in a restaurant. Sitting in the office one day I hear an awful squeaking shrieking noise. Took me a little while to find the source. Source turned out to be a mouse. Stuck in some old spilled pancake syrup under a storage shelf. Being eaten alive by the mouse stuck next to it. I'm curious. How bad does something have to be to get a 4% health inspection rating? A local restaurant got shut down for a 4% rating. Not health inspector, but I worked as an assistant cook at a restaurant. Two weeks into the job, I opened a cupboard to get a can of tomato sauce and I see a huge ass tarantula scuttling away behind the cans. I told the boss what I had seen, so that maybe we should get someone to deal with the huge ass spider living in the kitchen. Boss turns to me and say I see you've met Eduardo. Just don't put your hand too close to him and you'll be good. Later another cook proceeded to explain to me the spider been living there for 2 years and they allowed it because he kept rodents and roaches away. This is a true story. So know this reddit. Every time that you think about swatting a spider, remember that there is a possibility that a friendly spider is guarding your favorite restaurant's food against nasty critters. I'm not a health inspector but I remember reading a story 8 years ago. Where an inspector went to check out a kebab shop in Wolverhampton, UK, they found the owner preparing kebabs for that night, while a corpse was lying on a sofa next to him. I had to take a sanitation class for culinary school. One day the health inspector came in and gave us a presentation. He looked up all the citations in town, and my personal favorite was improper use of a hand sink for the local strip club. I'm not a health inspector. But I've been waiting tables since I turned 16. Some of the things I've witnessed have really turned me off to going out to eat. The worst thing I can think of right now is when I saw a manager blow his nose into the salad dressing and mix it up. 
I wish I was lying. Not a health inspector but assistant manager at a restaurant for a year between university. I once saw my sous chef flick a fillet steak out of the pan, kick it back up with his foot and land it back in the pan to continue cooking. He did this three stroke four times. I was watching on the CCTV trying not to laugh every time he celebrated each catch. Not me, my cousin. She was a health inspector for the city of Melbourne, Australia many years ago. Her advice? Never eat at Chinatown. Dead fish floating in the tanks of seafood restaurants, with barely a live fish in the same tanks. Slime and mold in said tanks. Rusty surfaces used as chopping boards and mold covered wooden chopping boards. Raw meats prepared together with raw vegetables. The lady washing the dishes at the cash register was the same lady that cleaned the toilets and made the dumplings. She never washed her hands. It doesn't matter how much you pay, whether you spent $200 on your meal or $20. They are all as filthy as each other. The most expensive and well known were actually the worst offenders. Cockroaches. Cockroaches everywhere. There is no such thing as an expiry date. Sources mask everything. There is a saying here though that many people are aware of, the nastier the place, the better the dumplings taste. Former inspector here. I once discovered a rat infestation in the kitchen of a hospital. They asked me if I could prove my suspicions. I pointed out the numerous foodstuffs with 1 minus 2 inches circular holes chewed in them. But they didn't seem convinced. I showed them the trail of droppings and footprints coming and going from a hole in the floor drain. But they didn't seem convinced. I showed them the three dead rats I had discovered under and around equipment. I think they began to believe me at that point. Citations included rat infestation and absolutely deplorable cleaning practices. Instant answer on my front page. Not a health inspector, but I used to manage a well-known sandwich shop. One day, I discovered a huge colony of black, stachiba trees, mold growing behind one of the walls. I mentioned it to my assistant manager, who told me that everyone knew it was there, and that the entire staff assumed that I also knew about it and was just keeping my mouth shut. I reported it to the district manager and the owner that day. They both told me that they knew for a fact that black mold was harmless and that they weren't going to pay 3 grand to tear out the drywall and replace it. I was fired inside of a week. I reported them to the local health department but, by the time the health department got around to doing the inspection, they had already fixed the wall. I had a health inspector tell me the story. There was a family in which both the elderly mother and a handicapped sibling used wheelchairs. Another sibling lived in the house with them and did all the driving. ETC. The health department got a phone call from the local wheelchair company. The brother stopped by and picked up a new, custom built wheelchair for his sister and for his mother, and returned within about 30 minutes, saying that the sister's wheelchair hadn't been made to the right specifications, it was too small. After he left, the staff noticed several roaches on the chair, so the guy I met got a call. Apparently, it was summer, midwest, both hot and humid, and the house was all locked up, with no open windows for ventilation, curtains drawn, etc. The inspector entered the house and he said it was so stifling hot that he started to get dizzy, and, he thought, hallucinate. He said that there was a sound like leaves rustling in the fall, and the walls and floors were kind of vibrating. He then realized it was because they were literally covered in roaches. He immediately evacuated the three people living there, and the next day, they tented and sprayed the house. He went in, in a Tyvek suit and knee-high rubber boots, and said that the dead roaches were about two and a half feet deep in most parts of the house. I used to work next to a Chinese place that tenderized 20 pound roasts by repeatedly slamming it on the floor. The pizzeria I was working at the time was so dirty, the wife changed the baby inside your pizza box. At another pizzeria I worked at I was washing dishes and the manager came to me with a block of Swiss cheese. It was covered in mold and he wanted me to scrub it out of the holes. Environmental health inspectors don't only cover restaurants. I inspect wells and septic systems. I see sewage every day. The worst thing I've seen are old men coming up to their door naked. And what makes it worse is that they knew what date and time I was stopping by. 
When my dad was a teenager he would go to a beach half an hour away with his mates and on the way home they would stop at a great pie place. It was well known and dad says they served the greatest pies ever. They got shut down after it got out their pies were full of tinned dog food. Pools that have absolutely no chlorine. Pedicure tubs filters that have never been changed. All of their disinfectants were expired. A restaurant that refused to clean up pest fesses urine. Refuse to properly cool foods, and refuse to properly reheat foods. The kitchen had exposed wood everywhere, well it would be exposed if there wasn't a thick layer of grease, and no sanitizer. Probably too late for this one. But two years ago a colleague in my department under food safety went to inspect a Chinese in a local town. Everything was going okay, as okay as food hygiene inspections go for a better than average Chinese, until she went to inspect the space upstairs above the kitchen. Our policy is that where employees stay, if it's in the same building, that is part of the premises. When she went up, she found a large number of illegal immigrants staying there. The police were alerted and the Chinese was closed down before reopening under another name. I think registered under the owner's wife's name. Another quick new premises inspection followed and it got a hygiene rating of 4 out of 5. Which for the type of premises is about as good as you'd expect and it was left alone for 2 years. Fast forward to last week. Another colleague went to inspect the premises for their biannual routine inspection. You'll never guess what the police were called for again. I once stepped into this restaurant and realized I was wading through gallons of urine all over the floor. I was the owner. For as bad as some of these stories are, I hope people understand that people in restaurants do touch your food. There's nothing that you eat in a restaurant that hasn't been directly touched by somebody in the kitchen. Some of you may be thinking well, why don't they all just wear latex gloves? Actually, there's a couple reasons. They break far too easily among others, that make it impractical but most importantly, if you only wear gloves then whatever it is that you think is on their hands is now just on their latex gloves. Compulsive hand washing, hair nets, and keeping the place properly cleaned is as much as anybody can reasonably expect. Incidentally, Applebee's is to be the cleanest place I ever worked at. If you were standing around they'd hand you a toothbrush and tell you scrub the grout between the tiles. Every day was a good 2 hours of cleaning after the place closed. That's with a good head start.